I hope you would agree that it has been a, um, it's been a very interesting conference. Uh, a good topic, uh, some, some lively discussion. Uh, we, were, we were tossing up about the wisdom of uh, combining the, uh, the fleet review and all those activities with PAC 13 and the Sea Power Conference. Um, there's no doubt that it's changed um, the tenor of it a little bit from, um, from previous conferences. But I think uh, if you stand back and look at, the, uh, look at it holistically, it's been an overall positive thing to do. Um, and I'd like to thank our, um, our speakers from uh, here and overseas for their contribution throughout the conference. It, uh, you know, it's not easy to, to get away and I appreciate those who have got away and made the effort to come here. Now I'm not going to summarise the entire conference, I wouldn't do that to you. Um, there have been some, some highlights though and this, I think this last session was, a, was definitely in that, in that category and I don't need to recap on that. Um, the other big highlight for me is that I think these sorts of conferences um, show uh, if we go back to the theme, naval diplomacy at work. There's been a lot of naval diplomacy going on throughout this conference. Um, in fact, many of us have spent the entire conference doing naval diplomacy. Uh, and, and the discussions that we've had in the margins and in the back rooms um, are really important parts of uh, this sort of gathering. I think the Chief of Army's conference is uh, uh, Presentation is one that I would encourage you all to think about deeply. Uh, I have managed to, I think, provide a copy to all of my um, counterparts and their representatives so that they can pass to their own Chiefs of Army or Chiefs of General Staff. And, and uh, I know George is going to do that. Um, <laughs> and ask them why they can't make speeches like that. Uh, so I think David Morrison's going to be pretty unpopular wandering around the, uh, the armies of the world in the next, uh, next year or so. But I thought he, he made some really telling points. Uh, the sort of speech that uh, um, someone said to me, well, why didn't you give that speech? I said, because he was going to give it. And, you know, him giving it is so much more powerful than me giving it. If I give it, it sounds like a broken record. If he gives it, people sit up and go, wow. Um, the fact that we're saying exactly the same things um, is irrelevant. It, it's, it's the fact that he stood up and he, and he gave it. And what's more, I can tell you, having worked with him pretty closely over the last few years, he believes it. It's not just, um, he's not just mouthing some sort of line here. This is what he believes. And I think his assessment around um, the difficulty in, in shifting our strategic uh, culture is a very important piece and there's a um, Mike Evans who many of you will know uh, is a very very um, wise uh, thinker uh, has written a new piece for the Army History Conference last week which I would also suggest you get a, get a hold of because a, a lot of what was in uh, David's speech on, on Monday was, was gleaned from that. Uh, Tom Mankin's exploration of the psychology of naval diplomacy um, I think was, was a challenging piece for people and I, I, I hope that uh, it was thought provoking. Um, Admiral Haney's speech, the takeaway that while you can't surge ships, um, you can surge ships, you can't surge trust. It has to be built and, and uh, nurtured over time. The First Sea Lord has continued his, his discussion, his theme in recent months uh, around, around sea choice. And I think, again, that is something that we, we all need to pay attention to. And finally, Kim Beasley's wide-ranging survey of the strategic background uh, to force structure, I think, was, as we would all come, have all come to expect from Kim, uh, an, excellent, an excellent piece of work. So I look forward to uh, seeing the papers promptly. <laughs> I look forward to the Sea Power Centre publishing it promptly so that uh, we can get uh, the learnings out there for everyone to, to make use of. Now at this point I would wish you safe travel uh, and that would be it, but I have a couple of other things I want to do. Um, about 14 months ago I 
started to explore publicly um, a way for us to work our way out of what had become a very binary and confrontational discussion about the two major schools of strategic thought in Australia, being the Continentalist School and the Expeditionary School. I had a view that uh, neither of these were very useful in the Australian uh, geostrategic circumstance and that there, there really was, to steal a phrase from the UK, there was a third way. Uh, and that third way, in my mind, was a genuine uh, maritime school of strategic thought, which of course has been the topic of this, this particular session. The initial response from those couple of speeches last year was, was, were quite positive. We then launched on a series of seminars uh, and workshops around the country, across uh, defence, across government, and with international participants to try and unpack this concept of a uh, maritime school of strategic thought for Australia and to see where that led. Um, where it's led is, um, is, this, is this book from the Sea Power Centre which uh, is being, being launched this morning. Um, it has a, a range of, of very good views about the topic and I think um, it, it will be available on the Sea Power Centre website today. I think there's Justin either today or tomorrow. So if you want to download a version, that's fine. Otherwise, we can, we can get you a, a hard copy of it. Um, I think it's a, a great synopsis of the workshops and it helps, I think, try and further the, uh, the evolution of a genuine maritime school of strategic thought for Australia, which I think is desperately, desperately needed and we need to get out of this um, very confrontational uh, approach that we have had in the past. So I officially launch that. Um, I'd also like to um, launch a DVD of the history of the Royal Australian Navy, volumes one and two from 1778 to 1945. Um, this has been in the, in the uh, under, production for a couple of years now and I've got to say it's, a, it's an, excellent, um, an excellent piece of work and I'd like to thank uh, um, our naval historians, our imagery specialists, um, Peter Ryan who is the producer and the director and Chris Young the editor. It tells the story uh, of our Navy over that period uh, quite well. Our next project will be to update uh, and go for volume three which will be 1945 uh, through to the present day. But I, I do I commend this to you. Um, it's a very professionally done uh, DVD and I officially launched that as well. So on that note, um, thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, thank you for your participation. Um, thank you to the Sea Power Centre staff, to the Navy Events staff, to um, the wonderful range of uh, our young officers and midshipmen who have done such a sterling job both on the registration desk and uh, in and around the venue. Uh, I really appreciate the effort that you've all put in and I hope you've got something out of it. Uh, and I hope that you all enjoy uh, this afternoon's finale for, for the IFR in watching four and a half thousand um, sailors from around the world marching down George Street in one final act of naval diplomacy uh, for this week. Thank you very much.